Hello Internet, Dave here and welcome to one of my Let's Builds as part of my fun for my channel. Today I'm building an Imperial Guard Valkyrie from Warhammer 40k. I decided to do this video to see, show you how I am building mine, what colours I'm using, as well as give you some background about the Imperial Guard's Valkyrie and possibly some of what inspired the name. I will be using double time triple time and quadruple time to speed up the video process so it's not just a long slow smog so let's get to this first of all the Valkyrie is a vertical takeoff and landing vehicle or VTOL airborne assault carrier used primarily by the Astra Miliama as both a ground support gunship and transport for airbat com Bat regiments like the Tempest Scion squads and the Elson drop troops. Despite serving the tactical needs of the Imperial Guard, a Valkyrie and its crew are usually composed of pilots and Iron drawn from the Imperial Navy's Astro Nuclear Imperials and are provided to the Guard on as a need basis or when they need them basically the valkyrie assault carrier is a maneuverable well armored twin engine attack craft the durable armor and versatile chassis combined with the aircraft's powerful engines and stable handling make it a popular choice for a broad spectrum of battlefield roles these attack craft use atmospherically sealed cockpits and omni-consumable promethium in their vehicular turbo jets, allowing them to be deployed against enemy flyers in the upper atmosphere and against ground forces on even the most hostile worlds. Supporting a troop capacity on par with the Eumitibus Chimera, the Valkyrie is often used to swiftly redeploy squads of infantry, strike at key targets by courses of temporary sections, reinforcements of buckling battle lines by grim force bands of veterans, even hastily transporting for ranked officers of these are the duty of the Valkyrie. With a few notable exceptions, German alarm formations will have a small number of Valkyries attached to them on a temporary basis. Such aircraft are, first and foremost, the property of the Aeronautilla Imperials. During extended ground operations, however, they are usually repainted to match their assigned regiment, and their pilots redeploy directly to that rem Regiment's superior officer, regardless of the difference in service. With vectored engine permitting vertical takeoff and landing, these versatile aircraft can, be, can twist, turn through the rigors of low altitude dogfights, or hover while troops repel from their holds. In addition, every Valkyrie is a trip equipped with a surface front grav chutes for all passengers, allowing explicit, if hazardous, high speed deployment into the thick of combat. As chute infantry descend towards a seething mass of foes, they are pe pe peppered with fire. Those grav troops who manage to touch down may find themselves within feeding range of some mutated xeno monstrosity or set alight by ghouls of demonic flame. But for all this, the shock of a Valkyrie drop is even more terrifying to the enemy, who find themselves fighting on a new unexpected front, with no warning other than the roar of an overflying Valkyrie. Carefully orchestrating offences are flowing into utter disarray, disarray as Laz wielding infantry are disgorged to assault the flanks and rear of the assaulting army. 
Attilie and Sykers unleashed their destruction from far from the front lines. Our surroundings are brought down by the mass fire of the descending troopers. Valkyries have saw stored histories of service among Imperial infantry and armoured regiments, and since sometimes referred to by Imperial Guardsmen as Wings of the Emperor. Certainly, those Guardsmen who have seen a ravaging carnifex blasted apart from on high by a Valkyrie's Hellstrike missiles, or have been lifted from the path of an uncrushing Orc horde in the tight confines of the transport bay, have nothing but respect for these exceptional aircraft. So that's a bit about the aircraft. Now move on to what could have inspired it. Valkyries come from North mythology. In North mythology, a Valkyrie is one of a host of female figures who choose those who may die in battle and those who may live. Selecting among half of those who die in battle, the other half go to um, hell basically, the Valkyries bring their chosen to the afterlife Hall of the Slain, Valhalla, ruled over by the god Odin. There, the deceased wars become Inthrea, single or once fighters. When the Inthrea are not preparing for the events of Ragnarok, the Valkyries bear the mead. Valkyries also appear as lovers of heroes and other mortals. When they are sometimes described as the daughters of royalty, sometimes accompanied by ravens and sometimes connected to swans or horses. Valkyries are attended to, arrested in the poet Adia, a book of poems completed in the 13th century from earlier traditional sources, all of which were written in the 13th century. They appear throughout poetry of Scylla in the 14th century and in various runic inscriptions. The old English come from terms Valkyrie and Valkyra appear in several old English manuscripts and scholars have explored whether these terms appear in old English by way of Norse influence or relevant a tradition also native among the Anglo-Saxon pagans. Scholars theorize have been promoted about the the relation between the Valkyries, the Nouns, and the Dissar, all which are supernatural figures associated with fate, archaeology, excavations through Scansylvania, have uncovered amulets theorized as descripting Valkyries in modern culture. Valkyries have been the subject work of art, musical video, video games, and poetry. So yes, that's a bit about the uh, word Valkyrie and where it comes from, Norse and mythology. Very, very um, apt that um, Valkyries from Norse are winged beings who go and basically choose warriors from battle to fight Ragnarok. Now, for those of you that don't know, uh, Ragnarok is basically the end times, if you will, from the Warhammer perspective, where everything just falls apart, the world starts destroying itself, and everything comes to an end to be reborn. Because what Ragnarok is, is not an ending, but a new beginning. Like with what happened in the fantasy Warhammer, where the old fantasy Warhammer ends, we now have the Age of Sigma, which happened due after the end times, the Warhammer fantasy Ragnarok. Now, Valkyries have been around in the Imperial Guard roster for a very long time. So, it's not like we're going to have the end of uh, Warhammer 40k anytime soon. Though over the last few years, there have been quite significant changes in the rules. From 5th edition to 6th edition, and now, of course, 7th edition. I haven't personally played any of the 7th edition rules. I've not played any Warhammer 40k since 5th edition, so I'm way, way out of touch with the uh, the rule set. One of the reasons, as I say, I've, I like the Imperial Guard is that they are just everyday men and women of 
the Imperium, who have been forced or bred or just end up in the armed forces fighting against hordes of Xenos, Chaos Rebellions, Heretics, all sorts of nasty, nasty creatures and even traitor space marines and they do this all with las guns the most beamy of all weapons which are just like here i shot my flashlight at you have my flashlight as well as secondhand flax armor which hardly protects them at all they do all this for fear of being killed themselves by commissars or as I said it's been bred into them a bit about my decision on the paint color that I've done for this Imperial Guard Valkyrie like my Ketterton squad or Canadian squad or whatever, however you want to pronounce it I have done them blue very very blue dark blue for armor light blue for clothing and a very pale skin color this is all done deliberately you're wondering why is this it's not to state any sort of um, ice world or anything like that but my imperial guard are known as the 1914 squadron now why is that significant the 1914 squadron are based from the lost warriors from the First World War from both sides whether it be German, English, Australian, American anyone at all that died in the First World War are being honoured with this Imperial Guard unit that I have created the reason why is it significant for me personally is I have nothing but respect for all men and women who wish to serve their country and most of the men and women in the Imperial Guard just want to serve the Imperium of Man they have united all their differences be it race, colour, creed religion, background and fight together as one unit to protect mankind mankind to protect mankind from all the horrors of the 41st millennium I just thought that was quite specific and what were these people of the first world war fighting for they were fighting for their countries they were fighting for each other they were fighting for reasons of political stature now many people have heard the story of on the Christmas day of the first year of the First World War where both sides stopped fighting to play football. That just shows the indomitable will of the human spirit and I wanted in my own way to honour them so that is why I've done this. So there we are. And there it is, the finished Imperial Guard Valkyrie painted in the colours of my Guardsman Squad. I hope that you enjoyed this video. There will be more out soon. If you do, leave a like and subscribe. Until next time, this is Dave for the Empire.